Welcome back to Not Real Fishing, everybody. And today we are going to start on a pond I've never fished. We've already got some companions that I don't really would prefer them not be here, but we shouldn't mess up my uh, fishing too much, hopefully. But um, I was going to go do some bottom fishing at uh, the swampy spot. But I, I, I'm still kind of on antibiotics right now, and the being in the sun super long still kind of messes with my my stomach and the way I feel. So this is a pond that's behind Publix. So the, there's the Surf City Town Hall, which is right there. Then behind this is Publix, and there's a pond. And Publix pond is just around the corner from here, and we are going to go ahead and get this. Started. Oh, I'm using like a kind of like a Copper John Kabari, but it's a little bit smaller than the ones I normally use. Little fishes came up after it. I just saw him. It's like little bass. There's little bass in here. Baby bass. They're watching it. They're not eating it. Which means there's baby ones. There's got to be some big ones. This obviously is not working. I'm not even getting follows anymore, so. Yeah, I'm gonna go grab the Imago real quick and we'll be right back. The reason why I'm grabbing the Imago is because one, we've already got a Marabou minnow tied on. Two, if that fish is as big as he appears to be, it'd be a little bit easier to fight him on the Imago. And three, I'll get a little extra reach that I can actually reach him. He's out towards the middle. And I'm obviously not able to reach there without getting super close to the bank, which I don't want to do because that prevents me from being stealthy right now. These I've noticed that with bass are a lot more sensitive to seeing. I just saw a little one right up by the shore. I've, they're a lot more sensitive to seeing you than some of the bigger ones, the, the smaller species of fish, like bluegill and stuff. Bluegill look right at you, swim away, count to five, and turn around and come right back. It seemed like the bass, once they kind of get on to you, they kind of ignore you. I mean, they kind of ignore everything that you cast out. It's like they know. They probably used to be targeted by people, so they probably do know. Where things will never get a break. People like me come cruising up. Now, I do see a turtle out there, but I don't think that was a turtle. The way it was moving just don't seem turtle-like to me. I mean, I, see that, that's a turtle. That isn't what I saw. Or maybe it was. Maybe it is just a turtle. Either way, I'm about to find out. On one hand, I hope it is just a turtle. On the other hand, I don't, because... We got one. Looks like a nice little bass. Oh no, it's a bluegill. It's a big old bluegill. Come on, little guy. I'm using eight pound test this morning, so I'm not gonna horse him around as much as I normally would. Come on, little guy. There you go. Oh, stop it. You're okay. See, look how, look how pale he is. Because the water's so clear. Oh, stop, stop. 
the water is so clear like and look how look how like he's almost like plain he's almost got no colors on him it's all silvery this water is crystal clear it looks like it's all sand it's just still a beautiful little fish but I won't get him back in the water there you go be about your day wow they're so pretty wow anyway that was fun let's catch some more of those there's a piece of structure in front of me too i want to try to it's like a piece of the, the like a like the grates yeah they're the turtles like the grates that they use all right guys after about 15 minutes trying to get that bass to bite after we caught that little dink one I just don't think that they're digging the marabou this morning. I think it might be the green, the, the chartreuse color, as opposed to like a more natural color. But it's okay. I'll just, you know. Sorry, I was looking at a fish. I'll just go back to the uh, roto, and we're going to kind of just continue our multi species assessment with it. Still have the same Kabari tied on it, I think. I think it was a Kabari we had tied on. I think I don't even remember. I think it was the what was it? I know we caught a fish on it. I think I don't remember. Oh, we, we put on the blue one. We haven't caught anything on the blue one yet because we just switched to it. Okay, I couldn't remember. I don't even know if that's gonna work. I don't know if blue is gonna be the color. We do have a lot of dragonflies out this time of year, so maybe have a little bit of chance of working better. Yeah, if you guys are ever curious as to what the the noodle is on this, that's how I hold my line on these rods. I just lay the loop in down first and then just wrap the line over it. This is what I had before I ended up getting the keeper from Tinkara USA, just because this is, you know, pool noodles are like $1.99 or a dollar if you go to the dollar store. Cut them in half. Tape them to both sides of your rod tube, and it gives you a reason to carry your rod tube because normally you end up leaving it. I'll just spool it up. Don't do that. Just spool it up. And then when you're done, to keep it from coming unrolled, just take your hook, pull it kind of tight, push it in there, and there you go. Good and simple. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, so let's get back to this. All right, guys, so we left our other spot because uh, the Sur City Police Department pointed out a nicer one. They told me about this pond that's back in here. Now, how am I gonna get to it? I don't know. It's kind of a steep hill here. But I'm going to see if we can find a way down. Looks like there's a path over here he told me about to get down to it. And uh, he was telling me that, he, that nobody ever fishes this pond. And I figured, hey, if a local police officer knows fishing spots that nobody else knows, they're probably going to be good spots. So we're going to try to get down to it. A lot of weed grass there. Can we walk out yet? Um, I think we can walk out right here. It's kind of hard to tell. Oh, it's a spot walked into that big old boy. Um, I'm gonna walk a little bit further and see if there's another spot. I don't want to break his web just to get there. If there's a better opening. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a park bench here. And it gets really steep again. But I might be able to get down to it. Right now we're just gonna kinda, I mean this pond is, I can get down right here. Well here we go guys. I already see movement. It does look really shallow, which he had warned me about. But I see life. 
Looks like there's another bank on the other side. But we're gonna start here because I'm itching. That other pond we fished this morning was, it was okay. A couple dink bass, but that's about it. And there's supposed to be, I see a turtle, of course. They're gonna be everywhere though. Let's see if we can get a hold of something. Here we go guys, this is more my speed. I'd like to get to the other side too, there's some grass over there. But we're gonna start here. We may have to put on a different colored fly. Little nibble. Oh, we got a little guy. Let's see what species it is at least. Appears to be a very pretty, very yellow bluegill. Actually, that might be a pumpkin seed. What do y'all think? Bluegill or pumpkin seed? Beautiful little guy, regardless. We're gonna let him go. We're probably gonna march over that way to that grass, fish along that bed, fish that point, and then I'm probably gonna go straight to the shade because it's getting hot. Let's let this little guy go. Of course, we're probably gonna do one or two more casts where we caught him. It wasn't real big, but he hit pretty hard. This pond kind of yells green sunfish too. Minus the, the heat of it. A little bit bigger, not by much. Just a little bit bigger. Another Nice size little sunfish. We'll let him go as well. All right. It's hard to tell when you're fishing straight out if there's anything that's out there because the water is so like brown. So you never really know if And like there's no fish surfacing anywhere, so it's kind of hard to tell. I found the other pond he was speaking of. Aside from the fact the wind's in our face, this looks beautiful. We got some fallen logs right in front of us. Turtle. We're gonna start. Right here. Well guys, I'm gonna have to call the video here. I'm a little tired. Oh, excuse me. 
I'm not 100% after, I'm still technically sick. I still got another six or seven days for my antibiotic to wear off. I've just, I mean, I'm past the contagious stage. I mean, I've been past that for three or four days now, but that strep throat really knocked me down. I meant to mention it in the last Tuesday's video, but I forgot. And I was out filming that video, I was actually had a 99.6 fever, which is fairly low grade. But when you're in, you know, 90 plus degree weather at the same time, it doesn't feel too good. But, uh, but there's that. And then when I got home that evening, I had 102.9 fever. I had cold chills, didn't sleep very good that night. And then the following morning, I felt a little better. Thankfully, I never got sick enough. I couldn't hold my antibiotics down, so I was able to get those in pretty quickly. It's been about a day and a half, two days. The symptoms were gone. Now I'm just kind of not 100% up yet. My stomach is sensitive more so than it usually is because the antibiotic has kind of killed my gut biome, so I have to rebuild all that stuff. And It'll be a few weeks before I can really go hard in the paint like I used to but uh anyway if y'all enjoyed it like comment share subscribe and I'll see y'all on the next one that's for dang sure I still want to get out there and do some catfishing but we'll see but uh most importantly y'all take it easy <laughs>